You're listening to Myers-Briggs Question Corner with Edith Richards. Hello, listeners. Today's episode is part three of a series I'm doing with the Myers-Briggs as it relates to job interviews. In part one, I talked about why personality assessments should not be used in the recruiting process, my own experience of being asked about my Myers-Briggs type in an interview, and how you as a candidate can handle tricky interview questions. In part two, I talked about why certain Myers-Briggs types may find interviews challenging and what they can do to prepare for an interview and combat nerves so they can show their best selves. In that episode, I also stressed the importance of emotional intelligence and how controlling your emotions and tuning into your interviewer can help you build credibility and increase your chances of landing the job that you want. In today's episode, I'm going to focus on the most dreaded interview question of them all, the weakness question. What's your greatest weakness? Now, it's true that you may not be asked the weakness question, but it's best to be prepared with a good answer because you don't want to let this one question trip you up. And I can tell you, in my nearly 20 years of working with job seekers, I've seen many candidates who are otherwise polished and eloquent speakers stumble over this question. Let me start by saying that everyone, regardless of their Myers-Briggs type, has challenges when interviewing. Interviews aren't usually fun experiences. You, the job candidate, are on display and put on the spot. It's nerve-wracking and aggravating. And when we talk about weaknesses, all Myers-Briggs types have them and all job candidates have them. So one can't help wondering what the point is of even asking the weakness question. Well, most interviewers know they aren't going to get answers that are 100% honest. Interviews are all about putting forth your best self, whatever your personality type is. A good interviewer is going to try to get past your professional interviewing facade to get a sense of what you're really like. What kind of employee are you? How will you fit onto the team? Even though you're not going to answer these questions completely honestly, your answer is going to tell the interviewer a lot about you. More on that in a minute. I'd like to propose that enlightened interviewers may still ask the weakness question as a means of testing you. They may not even use the word weakness in the question. For example, Tell me about a professional mistake that you made and the outcome of that mistake. This is actually my very favorite question to ask a job candidate in an interview. Now, I'm not trying to make the candidate uncomfortable necessarily. I'm trying to gauge what the candidate considers a mistake, get an idea of his or her past work performance, and also his or her level of maturity and emotional intelligence. Let's face it, Owning up to our mistakes isn't easy, and the last thing you want to do is talk about something that can put you in a bad light in front of a potential employer. But we all make mistakes. I'm much more interested in what you did as a result of the mistake. How did you solve the problem? How did it affect you and your performance? Did you learn from the mistake? What did you learn from the mistake? This question is essentially the weakness question in disguise. Other ways this question can be asked include. Do you have any weaknesses that I should know about? Or. If I call your current supervisor, what would he or she say is one thing you need to work on? Or. Tell me about a time you failed at work. What did you do to overcome it? Or, if you could change one thing about yourself, what would it be? And how about this one? What is one developmental goal that you want to improve upon? These questions are intimidating to anyone in an interview. A good answer requires you to walk a fine line. You don't want to sound disingenuous or inauthentic, but you also don't want to be so honest that you risk sabotaging yourself. I've asked the weakness question many times in interviews I've given, and I've gotten a lot of bad responses, like this. I just care too much. I'm a true perfectionist. Everything has to be perfect. And I'm a workaholic on top of that. 
Right, you expect me to believe that? This shows no humility, and more importantly, absolutely no evidence of self-reflection or self-awareness. And how about this answer? Mistakes. If I made a mistake at work, I never would have gotten promoted to vice president. I'm proud of all my accomplishments. For example, I earned my last company over a million pounds in just one month. Some people freeze in an interview when asked the weakness question. They may wrongly assume that being honest about their mistakes will make them look ineffective or undesirable as a candidate. Here's another one I've heard. My biggest weakness is that I'm not a morning person. I hit the snooze alarm like 10 times before getting up. It was honestly a struggle to get here by 10 a.m. I'm really much more of a night owl. I'm more productive then. Big surprise. Very few of us like getting up early in the morning. But mentioning this weakness isn't going to earn you any points, especially when it implies that you'll be late to the job. This answer also shows no willingness to be proactive and work on the issue. And finally, here's another answer I've heard. I'm scared of the water. I almost drowned in the ocean when I was a child. And as a result, I've never learned to swim properly. It's really caused some awkward situations for me, especially during pool parties in the summer. Unless the job you're interviewing for involves being in the water or swimming, talking about this weakness in an interview is irrelevant. This answer doesn't reveal anything of importance to the interviewer. You're just going to come across as either oversharing very personal information or dodging the weakness question. Now, here's how to answer the weakness question. First, pick a real weakness that is acceptable to the job you're interviewing for and is relatively minor in terms of the role you want. Here are some examples. Well, I get nervous speaking in front of very large crowds. Now, obviously, I wouldn't recommend this weakness if you're interviewing for a position that's very high profile and requires a lot of public speaking. But this is a real world example of a very common quote unquote weakness. What you don't want to say is this. I'm a very shy person and I have trouble speaking up in meetings. This is one where you have to really be careful. Shyness is more difficult to change, and it may have a negative connotation to the interviewer. So I'd suggest staying away from this one. Focus on a weakness that's fixable and state it briefly. Now, if you're having trouble identifying a weakness that meets the criteria of being real and authentic, applicable to the job you're applying to, and relatively minor, Now's the time to think about it in terms of your Myers-Briggs type. For example, David, my producer, who's the other voice you're hearing on this podcast, is an INTJ type. And an area many INTJs like David struggle with is speaking in front of very large groups. Now, this isn't to say that public speaking difficulties only happen with INTJs. That's absolutely not true. In fact, many people, regardless of their Myers-Briggs type, struggle with public speaking. So you've picked your weakness and you've stated it in a brief, neutral way. There's no need to go off on a tangent describing why you have public speaking anxiety. The real focus of answering the weakness question successfully is to talk about what you're doing to address it. This is absolutely critical. You need to show that you're aware of the issue and you're working on it in a positive way. You're also showing the interviewer that it's not going to slow you down. Let's hear some thoughts from David on improving public speaking. Well, I recognized it was an issue long ago, back in school when I had to give presentations. I did talk to a teacher about it and she gave me some pointers and I've never forgotten them. I went for several years without ever having to give formal presentations professionally, which I'm grateful for, until one time when a former manager asked me to speak at a regional conference. There was no getting out of that. So I took a two-day presentation skills class at a local workforce centre up here in Scotland. And I started practising with the people I met there. And then you, Edith, really encouraged me to do these podcasts with you. And really, I have to say I didn't want to. But you were on about it, and I have to admit you were right. And I quite enjoy it now. I won't say I've overcome my fear, 
and I hope we never have to go live or I never have to speak to a large group. But I'm proud of myself for accomplishing this and it's really improved my confidence. In fact, I'm actually talking to somebody else at the moment about developing another podcast series. And that certainly would never have happened if I'd stayed in my shell. David, thank you for the great feedback and for stepping outside of your comfort zone. I'm really pleased to hear about how positive this experience has been for you. So David actually has a great outline here for how to address the weakness question in an interview. Let's put the pieces together and give our listeners a chance to hear the final answer. So David, is there any area of your skill set that you believe still needs some work? Well, I don't have a lot of experience with public speaking. I've always been more of a behind the scenes person, so I do get a little nervous when I'm asked to speak in front of a very large audience. Several years ago, when I knew this fear would become a problem if I allowed it to continue, I went to a seminar on presentation skills, and that helped me to become much more comfortable. Then I got the opportunity to lend my voice to a podcast series, and that's led to other opportunities. I'm very pleased with all the positive feedback I've gotten since I started putting myself out there. And speaking is still a skill that I'm working on refining. Great response, David. Public speaking is a very common fear. In fact, believe it or not, it's a bigger fear even than death or snakes. So what you've done here, David, is not only validate this fear for the interviewer and our listeners, you've talked about proactive steps you've taken to improve on it. You even went a step further and talked about how tackling this fear led to a tangible accomplishment. So well done. So folks, we're coming to the end of our time together. So I'm going to sum up how to answer the weakness question in two easy steps. First, choose a weakness that's a real one that the interviewer can easily relate to, but is relatively minor and able to be resolved. Second, focus your answer on what you're doing to address the weakness. This shows that you're emotionally intelligent and self-aware and that you have a drive to improve. Thanks for listening to this episode. If you'd like to hear more or you'd like to submit a question yourself, then you can find us at www.atopcareer.com. Until next time. MBTI and Myers-Briggs are registered trademarks of the MBTI Trust.